The world is a strange planet, made of strange people, strange places, and strange events. These are the lists that expose the truth about the strangest things that happen here, on Earth, the strangest planet in the world. These are meek lists. Wool parts, as discussed in our previous episode, are artifacts that are or have been discovered out of place, anachronistically located in a place or amongst other artifacts that conventional understandings of history tell us should not be possible. Picture this as an example. The Scan Pyramid Group conducted a series of scans of the Great Pyramid of Giza in 2015 and 2017, looking at the way cosmic particles called muons interact with their environment, which led to the discovery of potential voids or previously unknown empty spaces or chambers within the pyramid. Soon researchers will use new equipment roughly 100 times more powerful than anything previously used, producing a true internal three-dimensional tomographic image of the inside of the pyramid hoping to find, amongst other things, an entry route into these hidden chambers. Finally, explorers move aside a large stone, granting access to a new and unexplored room filled to the roof with treasures of antiquity, ceremonial masks of shimmering gold, stone statuettes, sarcophagi and canopic jars, and Chuck E. Cheese tokens? Well, that doesn't seem right at all. This is precisely the reason why the following three examples of Uparts, which Man, I wish they'd called them something else, because that sounds r ridiculous. Uh, precisely the reason the following three examples are so striking and unnerving in concept and presentation. Like, objects out of place, because then we could have at least called them oops, which seems in line with their very nature. Three more out of place artifacts messing with conventional historical timelines. Number three, the Wolfseg Iron. Via Wikipedia, which Elon Musk has not yet put in a bid for ownership, the Wolzeg Iron, also known as the Salzburg Cube, is a small cuboid mass of iron that was found buried in tertiary lignite in Wolfseg am Hausrock. Nope. In Wolfseg am Hausrock, Austria, in 1885. Described as a perfectly machined steel cube in the book Carl Sagan's Cosmic Connection, written by author Carl Sagan and produced by Jerome Agel and released posthumously in 2000 after Sagan's 1996 death, the Wolzeg iron was initially thought to be of meteoric origin until the Vienna Naturhistorisches Museum analyzed it with an electronic beam microanalysis and, quote, found no traces of nickel, chromium, or cobalt in the iron, suggesting that it was not of meteoric origin at all. According to the wiki, the Wolfseg iron is claimed by some as an out-of-place artifact, Ubart, and it is often stated as a fact that it disappeared without trace in 1910 from the Salzburg Museum. Unfortunately for this stated fact, the object is on display at the Heimathaus Museum in Wolklabrock, Austria, where multiple photographs have been taken. Let us analyze one of these photographs now, showing the perfectly machined steel cube in all of its anachronistic glory. Yeah, uh, I... Hold on. Dictionary.com Cube A solid bounded by six equal squares, the angle between any two adjacent faces being a right angle. Okay, um, Oxford Dictionary a symmetrical three-dimensional shape, either solid or hollow, contained by six equal squares. Uh, I mean, is this description even legal? A perfectly machined steel cube? Uh, since when are the paranormals so anecdotal and open to interpretation? Number two. Pakal's sarcophagus. Born in March of the year 603, Inich Janab Pakal I, sorry, was a Mayan political leader that ascended to the throne at the age of 12 and reigned for 68 years until his death in August of 683. Pakal is known for multiple successful military campaigns and the initiation of a building program that produced some of the Maya civilization's finest architecture and art projects, and was eventually laid to rest inside a large, fanciful sarcophagus in a building called Oh boy, this pronunciation is going to sound disrespectful. Baolan Yej Tena, or the House of the Nine Sharpened Spears in Classic Maya, now referred to as the Temple of the Inscriptions. Researcher and writer Eric von Daniken's 1968 best-selling book, Chariots of the Gods, included a mislabeled reproduced drawing of the sarcophagus's lid and his description of Bacall sitting in the cockpit of a spaceship and rockets ready to blast off. In the center of that frame is a man sitting, bending forward. 
He has a mask on his nose. He uses his two hands to manipulate some controls, and the heel of his left foot is on a kind of pedal with different adjustments. The rear portion is separated from him. He is sitting on a complicated chair, and outside of this whole frame, you see a little flame, like an exhaust. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and show the image. You, you are showing the image. This is the image? This is the spaceship. That's a guy lounging in a throne, tossing grapes in the air to catch with his open mouth. I mean, I look like that all the time, just with a beanbag chair and skittles. You're sure this is the image of the spaceship? Hmm. This, Mahana fans, is the image of this spaceship. Rockets down here spurt fire and cause these smoke clouds from the rockets and uh, space ship number one, Ica stones. The Ica stones are a collection of andesite stones found in Ica province, Peru, that bear a variety of diagrams, says Wikipedia. Some of them supposedly have depictions of dinosaurs and what is alleged to be advanced technology. These are recognized as modern curiosities, or ho oh, ho 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 Spoiler alert. Oh, I will admit to getting a bit frustrated here, Mahana fans. Who controls the various Wikipedias these days? We have already addressed that it is not ancient astronaut Elon Musk, so who here is in bed with big skeptics so deeply that they can't swim their way out of the luxurious Egyptian cotton sheets? In 1973, during an interview with Eric von Daniken, oh, there he is again, Ushuya stated he had faked the stones that he had sold. Great. In 1975, Ushuya and another farmer named Irma Gutierrez de Aparcana confirmed that they had forged the stones they gave to Cabrera by copying the images from comic books, textbooks, and magazines. Wonderful. Later, Ushuya recanted the forging story during an interview with a German journalist, saying they had claimed they were a hoax to avoid imprisonment for selling archaeological artifacts. Ha! I knew it! In 1977, during the BBC documentary Pathway to the Gods, Ushuya produced an Ica stone with a dentist's drill and claimed to have produced a fake patino by baking the stone in cow dung. Uh, that same year, another BBC documentary was released with a skeptical analysis of Cabrera's stones and the newfound attention to the phenomenon prompted Peruvian authorities to arrest Ushuya, as Peruvian law prohibits the sale of archaeological discoveries. Ushuya recanted his claim that he had found them and instead admitted they were hoaxes, saying making these stones is easier than farming the land, and should have quit while I was ahead. The stones continued to be made and carved by other artists as forgeries of the original forgeries. Oy. Although there is one item of note included here at the bottom of the document. Except in the rare cases that provenance is known, there is no reliable way of dating the stones. There, see? They don't know. So, yeah. Point Miklos. Let's see how they wrap it all up. In his Encyclopedia of Dubious Archaeology, from Atlantis to the Wallum Olum, archaeologist Ken Feder commented, The Ica stones are not the most sophisticated of the archaeological hoaxes discussed in this book, but they certainly rank up there as the most preposterous. All right, that's enough. I think we'll cover some more cryptids next week, Mahana fans. There's nothing like a cute fuzzy monster to cheer Miklos up when he is down.